It's fair to say that the Honda Civic is the new car equivalent of a Time Lord. Since its launch in 1972, 50 years at the time of this recording, it has metamorphosized from a city car into a super mini, then into a small hatchback, and now this family hatchback body style adopted by the 10th generation model. The exterior design adopts dramatic lines and a muscular stance that gives it a uniquely sporty and imposing look on UK roads. The front end possesses a clean and aerodynamic look. You get LED headlights and LED daytime running lights as standard and I love how they merge into this symmetrical gloss black front grille with the Honda badging prominently displayed. At the side we get a greater look at the Civic's athletic curves and dramatic lines. As standard you get 16 inch alloy wheels but if you upgrade to the next trim up SR you get 17 inch sporty shark grey wheels and with the Sportline model we have high gloss black alloy wheels. The rear end is overtly more athletic and sporty than the front and I think the key giveaway here is this prominent spoiler. Accompanying this are the bulky tail light clusters, aerodynamically designed air vents and gloss black rear diffuser with the Sportline model. So the 10th gen Civic offers a 478 litre boot capacity. There's a couple of hooks and anchor points to attach objects to the floor that I like to roll around and if you move this suitcase out the way and lift up the fake floor you're rewarded with a capacious amount of underfloor storage. Really impressive impressive, perfect for all your bits and bobs you want to keep out of the way of prying eyes. Now if you'd like to extend the boot capacity you can do by folding the rear bench in a 60-40 arrangement and that's quite easy to do from the back here you just lift up the levers and give the bench a push and it will fold down for you. That extends capacity to around 828 litres or 770 litres if you go with the 1.5 Sportline model. Now great news is there's no gap in the floor for those objects to fall down bad news it's not completely flat as you can see there's a slight incline there that means loading those longer objects into the rear cabin space isn't as convenient as it would be with a completely flat floor there's two driving modes that you can select manually econ mode adjusts the air conditioning and throttle response to maximize fuel efficiency and ex and ex sportline variants get the adaptive damper system that constantly controls the front and rear dampers according to road condition speed and steering operation in terms of suspension, ride quality is largely settled around town. The 16 or 17 inch alloy wheels do a great job at absorbing the impact of light undulations. Due to how low down the vehicle is though, when you go over a large hump or bump, that certainly sends a thump throughout the cabin and at higher speeds when you drive over a harsh abrasion, again that does disrupt the body structure. On the bright side, handling feels very confident. The car responds well to slick gear changes and quick changes in direction which makes this a very engaging motor for swinging around tight corners and bends. During those confident maneuvers the Civic grips the road very nicely indeed thanks to its low center of gravity and the steering is nicely weighted it's not too soft and it's not too hard providing a nice amount of feel and feedback from the front wheels. Sadly noise is an area where the temp generation Civic lacks refinement compared to its key rivals. Due to the car's low riding stance road noise from the 16 or 17 inch alloy wheels make their way into the cabin even at slower speeds. Engine noise is also quite prominent particularly at the lower rev ranges. They also send some vibration throughout the cabin too. All this means is that the 10th generation Civic simply isn't as peaceful or comfortable to drive around town. What's visibility like? Well you sit low down in the Civic but thanks to the great seat adjustability you get a great view over the bonnet. Side mirrors are nice and wide and I'm very impressed with the view at the back window though it's slightly compromised by the rear spoiler. Over the shoulder view isn't brilliant thanks to a chunky rear cluster but thankfully to make up for this front and rear parking sensors come as standard. When it comes to parking your Civic you get front and rear parking sensors as standard but if you climb up the range and go for an SR model upwards you get a rear view camera which I'll demonstrate for you now. It's not the clearest display in the world as you can see there it's quite grainy but those guidelines are responsive and they do a great job at helping you maneuver into a tight gap. 
The 10th generation Civic possesses a more refined and upmarket cabin than its predecessor. And while it's not particularly flashy, I do appreciate the understated look in 2022. Admittedly, it can feel quite cramped in the front here due to the low driving position, the way the windscreen slopes down towards the bonnet and the rear view mirror, which is practically staring me in the face. SR trims and beyond offer a leather steering wheel. It feels nice and grippy, adds somewhat of a premium feel to the cabin. Behind the wheel, we have a tiny five inch driver display shows very basic key information that you want to see while on the move with entry level se grades you don't even get an infotainment system just a five inch monitor with one usb port that's a pretty dire affair and you don't want to put yourself through that so do climb up the range to sr trims beyond because you get the honda connect infotainment setup that comprises a seven inch display with dab radio bluetooth wired apple carplay and android auto plus the Garmin satellite nav system. On all but entry level trims, you get dual zone climate control and it's always great to see that these are controlled via physical buttons and dials. In fact, with the 2020 update, Honda added more buttons to the center console following customer complaints that there were far too many functions incorporated into the display. I'd love to see more manufacturers follow suit with similar decisions. Working our way down the center console, the home of the charging pad also acts as a useful cubby perfect storage for your keys. Beneath that, we have the drive mode select buttons on the left-hand side of the gear selector, and on the right, you'll find the electronic parking brake. Then we have a single cup holder, spacious enough for my bulky bottle, and a sizable center compartment. In fact, you can uh, put the armrest back like that, lift it up, and it rewards you with a deep and cavernous space where you'll also find a USB port for charging your phone. In the rear, there's plenty of room for two adults, but if you'd like to squeeze another one in the middle, that will create an uncomfortable environment. Unfortunately, I do have issues with headroom. So I'm 5'8", and if I sit up, I'm nearly touching the roof lining, as you can see. This means taller passengers who are six foot or over may just touch the top and will have to sit in an awkward, slanted position like so to avoid collapse with the roof. There's also issues with getting kid seats into the back. Doors open quite wide, around 65 degrees, but due to the raised sills and the low roof line, you'll have to pivot and maneuver it in somehow. But once you've completed that challenge, you're rewarded with Isofix fittings on either rear seat. If there's no middle passenger, you can fold down the middle seat and that rewards you with a couple of cup holders and a makeshift armrest. There's one small and one large cup holder. The larger one is more than enough space for that bulky bottle. What's it like in the middle? Let's slide over and find out. Well, comfort wise, it's actually not too bad. The seat behind me is quite spongy, absorbing my back well. I'm not colliding with the plastic from the cup holders, which is great to see. Issues though are with legroom. I don't really have anywhere to put my feet. I'll have to encroach on the other rear passenger space because I have to straddle this large central tunnel. So should you buy, lease or finance a temp generation Honda Civic? Well, if you're shopping in the family hatchback segment and you want something that's a little bit different from the competition that still offers a great level of practicality, then this is most certainly worth adding to your list. The looks certainly aren't for everybody, but I find them very attractive and it's a car that still stands out from the crowd. I love that low driving position, which provides a lot of engagement and doesn't too harshly compromise visibility. Any cons? Well, I'm not a fan of that infotainment system. It's a bit laggy and unintuitive. And this high spec grade, the Sportline variant, even though I love the exterior design, it just doesn't offer the best value for money compared to the competition. But overall, I think the 10th generation Civic has aged really well over the years. And if you're not quite ready to make that leap to hybrid power, well, this is certainly still worth a look. If you need a hand finding your perfect Civic, then just get in touch with OSV's vehicle specialists via the number in the banner below. We'll be happy to explore your options to find the spec that perfectly meets your needs. Alternatively, just click the pop-up banner up there to book a quick call at a convenient time. And if you'd like to browse the latest offers on this car, click the link in the description to head over to our website. If you found this final look at the Tev Gen Civic helpful, guys, do give the video a thumbs up. That really helps us out. Also, subscribe to the channel to keep up to date with our in-depth vehicle reviews. And once you're on board, make sure to click the notification bell down there so you won't miss our latest uploads. But that's it for today. Thanks for watching. Take care and safe driving.